In this short video, we're going to explore how we can find an equation of a circle. So let's go back to geometry. We define the, a circle as a set of points equidistant, equidistant means the same distance, from a fixed point C called the center of the circle. And so if I look at the distance from any point on the circle, the distance from that point to the center will always be the same. In other words, every circle on the point is the same distance from the center, and that distance we call the radius. And we can use the distance formula then to find an equation for a circle if I know the radius and the center. So here's an example where we have the center at the origin, 0, 0, and we know the radius is 2. I'm just going to say any point on the circle, we'll call it P, so it's a generic point. I don't know its x and y coordinates, I just know it's on the circle, so I'll just use generic values x and y, and then I'm going to use the distance formula. So my first point is going to be the center, 0, 0. The second point is the generic point, x, y. So this will give me a formula which will have both x and y in it. And so here's the most complicated formula, just direct substitution into the distance formula. To clean that up, I'm going to start by uh, well, taking x minus 0. That's just x. I'll square that to get x squared. And the same operations for the y. Now I have y squared. So 2 equals radical x squared plus y squared. That's a much cleaner equation. To get something that we would consider more standard form, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. And then I'll have 4 equals x squared plus y squared. And then it's customary that we put the x squared plus y squared on the left and the radius squared on the right. So there's an equation. It's a very specific e circle. The center is, is given and the radius is given. Let's see if we can come up with a more general equation. Suppose that now we just have a radius of r. So we don't know what it is. We just know that it's some value r. So r is representing the radius. Still the center is at 0, 0. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and substitute in all of my values into the distance formula. The difference now is that instead of having a fixed number 2 for the radius, I have a variable or parameter, r, for the radius. But the steps are exactly the same. I'll get down to r equals radical x squared plus y squared. Square both sides. That gives me r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And again, just out of convention, we like to have the x squared plus y squared on the left and the r squared on the right. Well, that's not our most general circle because not every circle is going to have a center of 0, 0. So what if we have a center somewhere else, a point with coordinates h, k? And so, all right, we can still do the same distance formula calculation that we did before. Now we have for x1, and, X and Y1, we have H and K. We have R for the distance. And uh, we'll do the same operations. Now, I can't, I don't want to multiply out the X minus H squared or the Y minus K squared. I'll just leave those as the square of a binomial. And so, after I square both sides, I'll get X minus 
h as a binomial squared plus y minus k binomial squared equals r squared. This is what we call the standard form. The standard form of an equation of a circle with center h comma k and radius r. So again, note that we get a square of a binomial plus a square of a binomial. Square of a binomial in x, square of a binomial in y equals some number squared. Remember, r is a number. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and use this standard form because having an equation in standard form tells me I can identify where the center of the circle is and what the radius is. So given this equation, binomial x minus 2 squared plus binomial y plus 1 squared equals 4 tells me something about the center. The center is 2 and minus 1. Because remember, it's x minus h, y minus k. So to find the coordinates, we're going to look at what the opposite of what's inside the parentheses. So this is minus 2, so the x-coordinate is 2. And the uh, this is plus 1, the y-coordinate is minus 1. All right, given that center, the only thing that's left is what is the radius? Well, the right-hand side tells me the radius squared equals 4, which means the radius has to be 2. So now we can go ahead and oh, sorry, start by plotting the center. It's at the point 2, comma, negative 1, and then draw a circle with that center and radius Two. All right, let's look at a different example. We might have to think about this one a minute. A circle centered at 1, 2 passes through the point 2, 3. So we would like to know the standard form of the equation of this circle. Well, <clears throat> we need to know two things, the radius and the center. The center is given, so we know that h equals 1 and k equals 2. We don't know r, but we can calculate r by using the distance formula. The distance from the center to this point on the circle uh, will give me the radius. So let's go ahead and use the distance formula. And I find that the radius is radical 2, square root of 2. The formula uses the radius squared, so if I square that, I'll get r squared equals 2. So we know the center, and now we know the radius, and the radius squared, so if we substitute those values into our standard form, we get x minus 1, quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals 2. And again, I want to remind us that the standard form has the square of a binomial in x and then the square of a binomial in y. And so, in fact, I should probably update that to say that. We have a square of a binomial in x and the square of a binomial in y. So that's important for us to answer the next question, which is, we're given an equation. It's not written in standard form, and we'd like to write it in standard form so that we can determine the center and the radius of the circle. As it is written, we cannot determine either of those things. It's not clear what the center is, nor is it clear what the radius is. So what do I need? If I just go back, I want a square of a binomial in x and a square of a binomial in y. So here I just have y squared. So I don't need to be concerned about the y squared. It's the x squared plus 8x. 
if I just had x squared plus y squared, I would know the center is 0 comma 0. But here I have x squared plus 8x. So what I'm going to do in order to get the square of a binomial is I'm going to rewrite x squared plus 8x as the square of a binomial by completing the square. Remember the idea is we're going to add in some number to make this the square of a binomial. And whatever I add on the left hand side, I'll have to add on the right hand side as well. So I look at the coefficient on x. That is plus 8. So 2b equals 8 meaning b is going to be 4, and I'm going to have to add b squared, which is 16, to both sides. Now I can go ahead and factor the x squared plus 8x plus 16 as the binomial 8 plus 4 squared, and then collect the like terms. 20 plus 16 gives me 36. Now, to help us kind of see what the center is, uh, it may be useful to rewrite the y squared as y minus 0 squared, because in our standard form we have x minus h plus y minus k. So when we, re we write it this way, it's clear that k is going to be 0. So h would be negative 4, k is 0, and then the 36 represents r squared. So r will equal 6. So we can say that the center is negative 4, comma 0, and the radius is 6. Let's do another example similar to that one. Here we have to do a couple more steps because I have x squared plus y squared, and that may be tempting to say, oh, wow, it must be centered at 0. But on the right-hand side, I have both x and y terms. So my first step will be to get all of the variables on the left-hand side. So I'll use balancing. I'll subtract 4x from each side and add 2y to each side. So now I have x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 2y, and that equals 20. So neither the x's nor the y's are a perfect square or a square of a binomial. So we're going to use completing the square for both of those separately. So I'll have to do the completing of the x binomial, and then I'll do the completing of the y binomial separately. So in x, the negative, I'm sorry, the 2b is negative 4, making b equal to negative 2. And when I square that, I get 4. So I'll have to add 4 to both sides to complete the square in x. To complete the square in y, 2b is 2, which means b equals 1. And so b squared equals 1. So I'm going to have to add 4. 4 to complete the square for x, 1 to complete the square for y. And uh, so factor, now I get x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared and collecting the like terms or adding 20 plus 4 plus 1, I get 25. And from that I can see that the value of h is positive 2. The value of k is negative 1, and the value of r is 5, because square root of 25 is 5. So now we know that the center has coordinates 2, negative 1, and that the radius is 5.